Now that my alphabet has been corrected, Mr. Kilmer. You know, when there's, when there's a beautiful woman and there are seven helpers up here, I couldn't help but think of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And when I, <laughs> and when I, when I look at the talent that's up here on this table, I know who's dopey. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, your wonderful colleagues. Well, even in California, we're starting to, to see some victories. Gun shows. 20 years ago, I filed Nordyke versus King to stop Alameda County from banning gun shows at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. And it took 13 years to finally win that case and have gun shows in Alameda County. Earlier this year, the Second Amendment, thank you. Earlier this year, the Second Amendment Foundation, through my office, teamed up with the California Rifle and Pistol Association to stop the 22nd Agricultural District from imposing a moratorium on gun shows at the San Diego County Fairgrounds. While the government, quote unquote, studied the issue and imposed a moratorium so that they could take a look at how dangerous gun shows were. Now, mind you, gun show gun sales account for 2% of gun sales in the state of California. And despite the attempt to characterize non gun show events as attracting violence to the venue, it was actually other events that were causing problems for the police and the public safety people in San Diego County. Anyway, we managed to get a preliminary injunction to set aside the moratorium. In fact, next weekend, Crossroads of the West will host a gun show at that venue. In contrast to Nordyke, which took 13 years to resolve, we filed suit in January this year, and by June we had an injunction. And now we have defendants who want to go come to the negotiating table to try and resolve the case without further litigation. Hat tip to Mr. Michelle's office and his team of lawyers, including Mr. Brady, uh, Ms. Barvier, and, and uh, Tiffany. Uh, and let me say something a little bit on PC here. I, for one, am happy that female lawyers are starting to fill the ranks of Second Amendment advocates. Uh, they are oftentimes uh, much more talented and reasonable than... Uh, than people like me. <laughs> of course, after beating up on the 22nd Agricultural District, the California Legislature and Governor Newsom now want to try and pass a state law completely banning gun shows on, on, uh, on county properties. So look for this case to go into extra innings, folks. Gun confiscations. Uh, I'm currently litigating a case in the Ninth Circuit, Rodriguez versus City of San Jose. Uh, we just had to file a petition for en banc review earlier this month after the Ninth Circuit made up, out of whole cloth, an exception to the Fourth Amendment for seizing weapons from the spouse of somebody who is prohibited and refusing to return firearms after she had transferred the weapons to herself, had got the California Department of Justice to release the firearms to her, had proven that she had a uh, state-approved gun show or gun safe, and the city of San Jose still refuses to return the guns. Uh, that case also will be going into extra innings. California roster, you've heard uh, some other uh, very fine advocates up here talking about uh, Pena versus Hogan. That's a case that I'm privileged to work with uh, Mr. Gura on. It is currently pending with the uh, United States Supreme Court on a petition for uh, certiorari with that court. Uh, it is a challenge to California's handgun roster. You've already heard enough about that. Uh, but uh, it, it is a, an essential, um, an essential principle that, that we cannot let the government win these, uh, uh, the gun prohibition fight with, through the uh, death from a thousand cuts battle. And uh, that's essentially what they are doing. If they can keep advancing inch by inch, cut by cut, uh, we'll end up, all end up one day in California with single shot 22s. One case that I'm, uh, we are currently litigating and we are just getting ready to enter the discovery phase is a case called uh, Roe versus uh, United States. Now the plaintiffs in this case are all uh, named uh, by pseudonyms uh, because we're dealing here with uh, the intersection of gun rights and mental health issues. In California we have two procedures for what are called mental health holds. There's a 5150, which is an unadjudicated mental health hold, where if 
you have a mental health episode and we're not really sure what your diagnosis is, you can be held for three days without judicial intervention at all to see whether or not you are a danger to yourself or others. That results in California in the loss of your gun rights for five years unless you go back to court to get your rights restored. And oftentimes, the, uh, and I do a lot of this work in my, in my practice, um, oftentimes the, the rights are restored, oftentimes you, know, you shouldn't lose your gun rights because you've had a bad day. But California also has a process called 5250, which is an adjudicated hold. Once you've been, there is a judge who has said, we're going to hold you for longer than three days, oftentimes up to 14 days, then federal consequences kick in. And the federal consequences for an adjudicated mental health hold are for life. Now, this issue was recently litigated in the Sixth Circuit and in a case called Tyler versus Hillsdale, and it actually went up to en banc, never got to the U.S. Supreme Court. The government lost that case where the en banc panel of the Sixth Circuit returned a, uh, a decision that said, you must have some form of review to restore rights in place. And since the federal government does not have one, the case was sent back to the district court for further, uh, for further litigation. Roe versus uh, United States will be the Ninth Circuit version of that case uh, so that we can get the issue resolved once and for all. Uh, on a personal note, I'll be moving my base of operations to the state of Idaho. <laughs> Not, hang on, hang on. Not because the gun situation in California is that bad. The gun situation in California is tolerable. We are winning there, one, one suit at a time. But it's, uh, it's, it's let's call it pre-retirement planning for me. In any case, of course, California is sinning in other areas other than our gun rights. California is addicted to high taxes, business regulation, poor land management, poor resource management, homeless encampments, and now we see medieval diseases starting to spring up in our urban centers like the plague, typhus, and cholera. So, let's remember that uh, in my closing remarks are never forget that the Second Amendment is just one of the bricks in the foundation of a civil society. We must strive to preserve and protect all the rights that were deeded to us by our ancestors, otherwise we squander their sacrifice and their wisdom. Thank you.